Ladies and gentlemen, we now move ahead towards our next award, and that is announcing the campaign of the year. But before we announce the same, we have with us a very special musical interlude by someone who can literally take your breath away. May we first of all welcome on stage the children of DS School who have been learning music from the maestro himself, the very wonderful, ever smiling Mr. Shankar Mahadevan and Shankar Mahadevan Music Academy. And to join them on stage this evening, we have none other than the music maestro himself, Mr. Shankar Mahadevan, who's here to delight us with the labor of love. As President Ramesh Narayan says, it is his labor of love and it is Ramesh's love. No, no, don't go. He just came. I just came, yeah. A uh, little more voice in the monitors, please. Sorry, a little sound check happening here. Uh, and I'm just going to request for this mic. Uh, sir, while you do that sound check, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just a couple of days ago, Shankar, sir, you celebrated your birthday, right? Yes. Can we also sing happy birthday oh. for Shankar, sir, please? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, on the count of three, happy birthday. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Do you know why he said thank you, thank you so much? Because we can't sing like him. Thank you for embarrassing me, thank you. Oh, come on, you look <laughs> great, sir. Uh, it's an honor singing in front of you, Sadhguru. And uh, thank, you for, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Today, it's a special performance, as you see, the kids are here. Uh, just two minutes on the Shankar Mahadevan Academy. I always believe that we have the greatest two forms of classical music in our country. Karnatic classical, Hindustani classical. But, and I'm also a student of both. And from my childhood, I felt that somehow the way Indian classical music is taught in our country, there needs to be a little more structure. There needs to be a little more planning because everything is a very private one and one on one affair. And that's also a great way of learning. But I feel that if we have a if you have a structured curriculum, if you have a structured academy where you can see children progress on every step, I think it can make a difference, was my thought. Maybe I'm wrong, but I started off the Shankar Mahadevan Academy online seven years back with a very dear friend of mine who was a co-engineer. We both did engineering together and uh, we formed this academy seven years back with about 15 students and after seven years we are teaching our Indian classical music in 72 countries with students all over the world. And this is the only academy that's running 24 seven where teachers from, you know, because of time zones and stuff like that. Anyway, I won't speak too much. The joy of music, I believe, has to be imparted to every single child, every single person in this country because I think music is the most amazing form of communication. Uh, over here we have the children from the DS school, one of our many schools where we have associated and we are, we are teaching music to children. They need not be of any high economic background because I believe that, you know, music has to be taught to everybody irrespective of whatever background you are. So I thought that this is a great opportunity to give them a chance to sing with me and it's an opportunity for me also. And uh, yeah, you can clap here. Dil se tari madao. For these children, yeah. So, a song where, you know, I saw a wonderful ad over there where they showed stars in the sky uh, using the mobile phone. But over here, we have stars on the ground, Tare Zameepar. So, this is for you. Let's go. Hit the track, please. गोद में आसमां से कूदे 
अंगड़ाइले फिर करवट बदल कर नाजुक सी मोती हंस दे फिसल कर खो न जाएंगे ये तो है सर्दी में धूप की किरने उतरे जो आंगन को सुनहरा सा करने मन के अंधेरों को रोशन सा कर दे ठिठुरती हथेली की रंगत बदल दे खो न जाएंगे Bring the track down. The monitors. Voice up. Sanna 
नाते में हंसी के जैसे सुने होठों पे खुशी के जैसे ये तो नूर है पर से कर तेरी किस्मत हो पड़ी जैसे झील में लहराए चंदा जैसे भीड़ में अपने का कंदा जैसे मन मौज मदिया छाग उड़ाए कुछ कहीं हो न जाए हो न जाए Thank you very much. Let's have a loud round of applause for the DS School Children, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, kids. You all did really well. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Shankar sir, I'm going to request you to kindly remain on stage. Shankar sir. Oh, okay. After that. And ladies and gentlemen, I have the absolute honor to once again invite on stage Ramesh sir to kindly present a token of appreciation to the maestro himself, Mr. Shankar Mahadevan. Thank you for making music seem so effortless. Thank you. Now, and I know the audience can do a little better than that. So, ladies wow, and gentlemen. Wow, I get gentlemen. an award today. Wow. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Shankar sir. Thank you, Ramesh sir. Hey, now, ladies and gentlemen, we inch closer to the big awards for tonight, and it is followed by a master stroke. Due to some last minute commitment, our Chief Minister, Sri Devendra Fadnavis, could not be here this evening, but he has appreciated the entire team's effort and all of your efforts that we are taking as an industry. May I please invite on stage Mr. Narayan and Mr. Swami to join us on stage to present our next set of awards. Welcome, gentlemen. Everybody, I know you know them, but we can put our hands together and invite them on stage. Since its inception, the Olive Crown salutes a green crusader who selflessly works to make a significant contribution to the environment who earns the right to the coveted sobriquet Green Crusader. This year, we recognize not a person, not a corporate, but an organization that has re redefined sustainable projects. An organization that works not only for the society, but also towards the environment. The Olive Crown Award recognizes the Isha Foundation as the Green Crusader of the Year 2018 for the phenomenal work in the sphere of green. May we take a look at the AV, please? <laughs> Kaveri near Bingur Godre could take near Rila Rila in Nama, Makrum, Makla Kalke, Kaveri near Lau Gela in those Pekolego. Hata Pata and Gula, Pesa of Kitna, he who took Jelly, Niuga to Pesa Kiskamka. Flooding from monsoon rain in western India has swept away much that was in its path. Western Maharashtra is facing floods and drought at the same time. India Bhagada Bhimana De Sampurna Bhatti Hogata. 
North there are floods, in the south there are droughts. This is a clear case of the mismanagement of the ecosystem. The Indian rivers are in a dangerous state. If we don't do the right things in the next ten years, fifteen years' time, it could be too late. Very little will be left. When rain comes, there'll be floods, no rains, it'll dry out. Most rivers are becoming like this. The greatest achievement in this country is, without any modern science, without any technological support, without any great infrastructure, just with traditional knowledge, our farmers have provided food for 1.3 billion people. In the last ten years, over 300,000 farmers have committed suicide in this country. This is not a joke. That many people did not die in all the four wars put together. We keep dismissing it, saying it's because of the bank loan. Yes, all those factors are there. But the most fundamental thing for a farmer is a rich soil and abundant water. People think because of water, there are trees. No, because of trees, there is water. If we have sufficient number of trees, we will have sufficient amount of rain. If there is sufficient amount of rain and there are trees, then the water will sink into the earth and the rivers will flow. We want to make sure on the river sides, at least one kilometer on both sides, there are trees. If it's government land, forests. If it is farmer's land, horticulture and other tree-based farming. If we implement this plan, what we have, an economic plan, with a significant ecological impact. Most farmers can raise their income anywhere between three to eight times in six to seven years. This is fantastic to see that across the country, all sorts of people, from school children to celebrities, from simple farmers to tall leaders, Everybody is standing up for one cause, beyond religion, beyond caste, beyond gender, beyond political affiliations. Everybody is standing up for this cause. This is truly fantastic to witness this. We are tracking a mammoth movement, an incredible rally starting from Kanyakumari, reaching up to the Himalayas, all in a month with the sole purpose of rejuvenating India's rivers. Every state is responding, this is concurrence and this is wonderful. I'm very happy that Sadhguru has taken up this cause to also become a people's movement, movement for our own survival, for the survival of our children. This is Bharat. For small things we will fight, we will quarrel, but when real issues come for the nation, we stand together. May I now request Ms. Megha Tata, the Vice President IAA India Chapter and COO BTVI, along with Kalpana Maniar, the volunteer Isha Foundation, to kindly join us on stage. Ms. Tata, may I please request you to read the citation for us? Welcome, Kalpana. Thank you for joining us. It's in my honor to read the citation. I know it's cool. The International Advertising Association is privileged to present the Olive Crown Green Crusader Award to the Isha Foundation for its ongoing commitment to a greener environment, for its exceptional project, Green Hands, that has resulted in millions of saplings being planted, 
for its unique and far-reaching initiative, Rally for Rivers, that seeks a long-term solution to multiple environmental issues for spreading the message of Green Planet among all age groups of people and planting the seeds for a greener, brighter future for all. Signed, Ramesh Narayan, President, 6th March, 2018. Congratulations. Congratulations, Kalpana. Gentlemen and Ms. Tata, may I please request you to present the Green Crusader Award to Kalpana Maniyar. And of course, the Olive Crown. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have Encore. The team behind the success of some instrumental projects. Let's hear it for them. Congratulations, Isha Foundation. Thank you very much. We are truly honored. I speak on behalf of Isha Foundation. Um, the Rally for Aware Rivers Awareness Campaign was, became a national movement. Uh, we, were, we are really privileged to have support from various governments, and especially the uh, Maharashtra government, where the project has commenced execution. Um, this award really honors um, the vision that Sadhguru has set out for us, as well as it is a great motivation for all our volunteers who have a long project ahead. This is a large project. It will span over number of years. And this award is a great motivation to all the volunteers of Isha Foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Kalpana. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tata. Gentlemen, I'm going to request you to, oh, this time you didn't run, sir. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, to present our last set of awards, we've got two categories and four awards left. May I please request Mr. Narayan to kindly escort Mr. Sadhguru on stage, please. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Our next category, Campaign of the Year looks at campaigns that have caused quite a stir and have educated masses with the message of green. We have one silver and one gold olive crown awarded in this category. Let's take a look at the silver. In the category, Campaign of the Year, the silver olive crown goes to Happy McGarry Bowen, Ola Share, hashtag Farparta Hai, Ola. Confused on what to wear. But koi aur kya pehne? We don't care. Kya farak padta hai? Our food comes in various filters. But we don't filter people for their food. Farak nahi padta yaar. We fall in love, break up hota hai, and then we fall again. Ki farak pehna hai yaro? Love can have many names. Auntie ji, isse farak nahi padta. Farak padta hai, to traffic jam mein ghanto fase rehne. दिन रात के खासने से हम इन सब के बारे में केयर करते हैं तभी तो शेयर करते हैं बोला शेयर इससे कंजेशन घटता है और पोल्यूशन घटता है आप भी फर्क ला सकते हो सिर्फ एक रुपए में विद बोला शेयर पास शेयर करके देखो फर्क पड़ता है I would urge people to share their rights whenever they can. I would urge them to use a bus, use a metro, or use Ola Share if you can. Created by 
कार्तिक अय्या अमेया लोखंडे समरजी विजय शार रिचा एंड जॉन Oh, didn't we all love the disclaimer at the end that this was something that truly made a difference and it was not just for the awards. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the hat-trick win for tonight because in here, abhi, fark parta hai, yaar. Thank you. You really didn't want just a solo picture with Sadhguru? <laughs> All right. So ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for us to announce the gold olive crown in the category. So well, let's take a look. In the category Campaign of the Year, the gold olive crown goes to Ogilvy and Mather for Vodafone Eco Pond, Vodafone India. All this year, we put the good in goodbyes with an initiative called Vodafone Eco Pond. We partnered with National Chemical Laboratory and Pune Municipal Corporation and set up unique immersion points outside Vodafone stores across Pune. The idols immersed in these eco ponds were treated with a special chemical that actually disintegrates the POP idols and converts the residue into fertilizer, a blessing for nature. The eco ponds came equipped with Vodafone SIM-based sensors that constantly transmitted systematic data like water levels and aggregate weight of idols in real time. With this information, PMC and NCL could then initiate the process of converting the idols into fertilizer. Punekers loved this initiative and thronged every Vodafone eco pond. Created by Team Ogilvy. Heartiest congratulations to you, Team Ogilvy. Well, I hope you have decided which is more auspicious, the Olive Crown Gold for Campaign of the Year, or this beautiful photo that you are going to maintain and keep on your desks for a long, long time to come. Congratulations. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the team that truly dealt with religious beliefs with love and with such grace congratulations everybody let's see a big huge smile fantastic well done guys congratulations our next award salutes corporates who choose actions over words who believe that corporate social responsibility is truly corporate social investment, an investment in the environment around us, the community that we live in, and the planet that we share. We call this award the Olive Crown Corporate Social Crusader Award. This year, we present one silver and one gold olive crown to those who are continuously setting great examples for the corporate world out there. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the silver. In the category, Corporate Social Crusader of the Year, the silver olive crown goes to Vodafone India. The farmers, Vodafone turned towards the young urban travelers for whom unique, authentic experiences have more social badge value than luxury holidays. And thus started an initiative to help farmers generate an alternate income through Vodafone Farmo BNB, where farmers were turned into hosts and their homes were turned into homestays. Making the most of our social media fan following, we promoted this unique holiday experience. Bravo and congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great initiative. May I please request Mr. Suvamoy Roy Chaudhary, Director, HR Vodafone, to kindly accept this award. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chaudhary. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen.
And now we come to the heavy gold corporate social crusader. Let's take a look. In the category corporate social crusader of the year, the gold olive crown goes to Reliance Foundation. Heartiest congratulations to Reliance Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome on stage Mr. Kaushik Roy, President, Brand Communications, and advisor to the chairman, Reliance Industries, to kindly come on stage and accept the award. A very warm welcome to you, Mr. Roy. Here, Kaushik. Olive Crown was actually launched in his year by him. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to receive this, and I uh, would like to receive this on behalf of Reliant Foundation. My colleagues are here with me. Uh, Mrs. Amani, Ms. Neeta Amani, who is the chairperson of uh, Reliant Foundation, uh, couldn't make it, so I'm here to receive it on her behalf. Uh, I realized that uh, our entry was, was obviously uh, powerful, but the uh, slides that, you show, that was shown over here were not as good as the others, so we have to work on that. Um, let me just say that uh, I would first like to thank the jury for acknowledging the fact that we don't advertise what we do we actually do a lot of actual work. To say that, it really means that we believe that every penny that we spend on advertising will be actually taking away something away from what we can do uh, for those people who we have really reached out to today. We reach out to 16 million people. And CSR, which is Corporate Social Responsibility, is something that the government has mandated, which is a wonderful thing. But I think I can only tell you what Reliance has been doing by mentioning about a place called Jamnagar. Jamnagar came about in 1999, and it was an added wasteland, much like the video that you saw in the initiatives that being done by Sadhguru. It had 83 plants or trees. Today it is a 2,500 acres of a man-made green patch which you can see from the sky. We are indeed proud about Jamnagar for the fact that it changed the fortune of Reliance and it changed the fortune of India because from being a net importer of petroleum products India became a net exporter of petroleum products. But that is not really the reason why I'm standing here and talking to you about our pride. Today we are a green belt, and it could have been any plant, but today we are a green belt that can boast of perhaps the world's largest mango orchard, and today we also export a lot of mangoes. So that was possible in a place where there were 83 trees. So this is just to say that this was done at a time when the government had not mandated anything called CSR. And we believe that we have been working very hard. And I was starting to believe that unless we do some advertising, we will never get an award. But this year, thank you, <laughs> Ramesh, thank you, you have made us feel very happy and very proud for the fact that whatever we are being doing has been at least recognized by a jury 
who's gone through a document which could have been very bland and boring, but we'll work on that next year. Thank you very much. Congratulations, team. Shri Sadhguru, Ramesh sir, Swami sir, after this photo, I'm going to request you to kindly take your seats. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, could we have a loud round of applause for all the winners in this room tonight? Thank you very, very much for all the wonderful work that you do. And we only wish and pray that we continue to inspire each other and make the world a better place. The year 2017 has been a year that has showed and brought to the forefront great green initiatives by the government and non-government organizations alike. Tonight, we have with us someone who champions this cause and has united not only the country, but the globe to work towards stabilizing and revitalizing rivers. We have the great fortune of having with us this evening Sadhguru, a yogi, a mystic, a visionary, and the founder of Isha Foundation, a non-profit organization supported by over 9 million volunteers in over 250 centers worldwide. Sadhguru has initiated powerful yoga programs for human transformation and well-being, as well as various outreach programs for uplifting rural India. As we saw in the AV, ladies and gentlemen, one cannot deny the goosebumps. He recently started a historic nationwide rally for rivers, a campaign for comprehensive draft policy for revitalizing of India's fast depleting rivers. Sadhguru personally drove over 9,300 kilometers, covering 16 states and over 142 public events. The policy proposal is bow with Niti Aayog. It is out it is our privilege and honor to have with us this evening Padma Vibhushan, Sadhguru, the highest civil honor amongst us. And this August gathering, I'm sure, is eager to listen to him. But ladies and gentlemen, before we invite him formally on stage, let's take a look at this AV. In the next half hour, you're going to meet a man who has a devoted following across India and indeed around the world. While yoga and meditation are at the core of his teachings to promote individual growth, the work of the foundation covers conservation, education and health. And you'll find him astonishingly pragmatic on a range of very modern day problems. Let's meet Sadhguru. For the very first time in the history of humanity, we have the necessary resource, we have the necessary capability, we have the necessary technology to address every human problem on the planet. Even twenty-five years ago, we couldn't have dreamt of it. But the only thing that is missing is consciousness. Today, the spotlight is on a project called Green Hands in India. We started a mass campaign and uh, six years I spent planting trees in people's heads. That's the most difficult terrain, believe me. And now in the last six years, we've been transplanting it, and that's happening much more easily. Action for Rural Rejuvenation is mainly aimed at rejuvenating the human spirit. English and computer skills are very essential to make these children come out of the hopeless economic and social pit they are in. If you could first tell our viewers what is the idea behind it, initiative, insight, which is more specific towards entrepreneurs. Whatever the nature of your business, ultimately it is all about human well-being. Isha Foundation, a non-religious, non-profit public service organization headquartered in southern India. Sadhguru has established Isha Institute of Inner Sciences in North America as a space for inner transformation and complete well-being. 
Surrounded by the serene forests of the Cumberland Plateau, Isha Institute attracts visitors from around the world for its unique programs and special events. We've engineered the outside world in so many ways, but we've done nothing about this one. If you want to know well-being, in is the only way out. This is what I want to teach you too, that is, you can be completely intoxicated without any drug, just on life. This is a shift from wine to divine. Adi Yogi is the source of yoga, the first yogi. Adi Yogi will inspire many generations to take up yoga. One truly remarkable thing that Sadhguru has done is, he has made yogis out of ordinary common people. We are tracking a mammoth movement, an incredible rally starting from Kanyakumari, reaching up to the Himalayas, all in a month with the sole purpose of rejuvenating India's rivers. Every state is responding, this is concurrence and this is wonderful. I am very happy that Sadhguru has taken up this cause, it should also become a people's movement, movement for our own survival, for the survival of our children. If you have to describe yourself in one word, would you consider uh, wildlife as two words or one word? It's President Pranam Mukherjee felicitating uh, his Sadhguru for all his spiritual contribution. Ladies and gentlemen, Sadhguru. Let me reiterate that the draft policy recommendation has been handed over to the Honorable Prime Minister. Without further ado, please welcome on stage Padma Vibhushan Sadhguru. And to engage Sadhguru with some interesting questions that we may have on stage, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us Mr. Sidhanshu Vats, Group CEO of Viacom 18. Media Private Limited. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me first start by thanking, uh, you know, Ramesh here and Megha Tata for giving me this opportunity. It's indeed my pleasure, privilege, and honor to welcome Sadhguru and thank him for being with us and indeed giving me the opportunity to be with you for, for these 30 to 45 minutes. Thank you, and, and let's start. Sadhguru, as has been sort of, you know, spoken about and shown on the audiovisual several times today, uh, and I have been uh, associated in a small way with this as well, I wanted to uh, start off with uh, the Rally for Rivers. I think, you know, 16 states, 9,300 kilometers, in 30 days, 142 rallies. And uh, so I, I, would, I, started, I would start off by saying, I know you've spoken about it quite a lot, but I wanted to talk about two specific things. When and where did the idea germinate, Sadhguru? And second, if I could club it together, is your experience of having lived through it? Because we've seen it, you've spoken about it, but I think for this August gathering and, and you know, the privilege of yours. So where did the idea germinate and, and what was your, uh, you know, experience with everybody in, in the entire thing? Namaskaram and good evening to everyone. Please smile. Hello. Yep. Namaskaram and good evening to everyone. <laughs> My, uh, my association with forests and rivers of this nation uh, goes back to very early childhood. When I was just ten, eleven years of age, uh, if I found ten rupees, it's a lot of money those days, I would buy enough bread or whatever and I would be gone in the jungles for days. Well, there was a whole drama happening at home and in the town looking for me, but 
I was so engaged with this because when I was in the jungles by myself, what I realized was this was not trees and animals and reptiles and stuff. This was a mega life by itself, much larger life than myself. This is how I experienced the forests of South India. Then when I was seventeen, I floated down Kaveri for thirteen days, hundred and sixty-three kilometers. And uh, I lived off the river, just on four truck tubes and a few bamboos, I just floated down. Like this, my engagement with this has been always. But in the last twenty-five years, I have watched with some concern that uh, these magnificent rivers and the most fantastic… I have… for many days I have lived without food just on the Kaveri river water and the few Nugu and uh, Kabini river water because uh, I wouldn't get any food and I just drank water and did whatever I did. But when I saw that the way the river is dropping down and the vegetation around it is being destroyed at the pace at which it's going. Particularly in the last seven to eight years' time, the depletion of Indian rivers is… Uh, is uh, disastrous. With 1.3 billion people on our hands, the way our soil and water is depleting is something that nobody can ignore. I, I don't think most people will understand unless they actually travel a little bit in the country and see firsthand because what's happening is beyond irresponsible, beyond that. Something totally disastrous we're doing as if we're the last generation here, that's how. That's why most of them are packing off their children to other countries because uh, we're living like we're the last generation. So this is… this rally has been on my mind for the last seven years but this is my way, I never speak to even people who are immediately around me. Only fifty-nine days before the rally, for the first time I spoke to our teams. They said, how is it going to happen across the country, how can we unleash all these events we can do in major cities but how can we do in the villages and all this. Then we went into the detail, this detail had worked out and we went into the detail for a few days. Then all the teams across the country got into a huddle of their own and started working towards it. But the phenomenal thing was for the first time, across political spectrum, all parties across the country responded positively, which I thought is really… I, I need to acknowledge the political parties for this because uh, all of them coming together for one cause is a miraculous thing. <laughs> it's it's almost happen? like we have taken the word opposition literally, we got to just oppose everything that happens in the country. But they all came together, which was wonderful because that was significant. Because we drove… when we drove through the sixteen states, uh, we drove through states which are ruled by six different parties and all of them came full on board and most of them signed MOUs with us. So my experience of this, the problem with me is uh, <laughs> I… because I don't have a thinking mind, I have a picturing mind <laughs> so I picture every every small detail in my mind without really thinking in words and what should happen, what should not happen. So literally the rally went almost in total, almost ninety percent just the way I had pictured. So there were no surprises or too much excitement for me. It was nice once again, I've driven and ridden across India on my motorcycle, later on I've driven across the country many times. So almost for last uh, maybe eight or nine years, I have not really done such extensive driving. So it was wonderful to <laughs> drive across India. Though I drive across the world, it's always very exciting to drive across India for a variety of reasons. Uh, so it was a… it was a great thing, particularly the way ordinary people responded. You know, people who do not know what's happening in the country or in the world, they don't know what is ecological disaster, what it is, nothing, simple simple people who are fighting for their daily survival. I'm telling you, we're like many days, we, the, the distances were planned in such a way that we would drive for about eight hours to nine hours a day. But most days we ended up driving fifteen to eighteen hours a day, some days twenty-four hours a day <laughs> because everywhere they're stopping us and they've organized events of their own. 
Small villages have organized events of their own. I get down and uh, you know my Hindi <laughs> and somehow I speak something. I'm driving through somewhere on the border of uh, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. It's around 2 a.m., it's raining and I'm… you know, my right leg is a little heavy usually. <laughs> So like I'm… like maybe I'm doing like 140, 150 and blasting out. And suddenly in the corner of my eye, I see a blue patch in the rain. And I thought, two, three blue patches which is the rally for reverse thing. <laughs> then we almost went off half a kilometer away. Then I said, somebody was standing there. And then we backed up all the cars. And you won't believe, one old lady, three girls and two little boys, they're standing there with rally for rivers, they just… somebody told them, some Sadhguru from somewhere is coming and he wants to save the rivers. They're standing there at 2 a.m. in the morning. It, this is… this is something fantastic, you know <laughs> No, no, incredible Sadhguru. I know, I remember even in Bombay, the speed at which you were driving, I've seen how the outskirts is okay, early morning on that day. But Sadhguru, I think the other thing which you spoke about in the audiovisual as well, I think this entire concept of bringing together economic benefit with ecological benefit is something if you could sort of elaborate a little bit more for the audience, it would be really good, I think, because normally when we talk of anything to do with uh, social, uh, corporate social responsibility or ecological things, the thinking is it perhaps goes contra to economic benefit. And I think here it's, it's sort of, you know, it busts that uh, paradox in a manner of speaking or that thinking. So we must understand this, whatever is philanthropy is only a helping hand when somebody is down, it's not a solution. It is not a solution in the real sense. Solution will happen only when it becomes a two-way process and it can be continued, it is sustainable only when everybody benefits, otherwise it's not sustainable. Whether it's in the marketplace or marriage, if both the parties benefit, only then there is a sustainability. <laughs> so we… I was looking at how to make an ecological initiative into uh, a win-win for all the people concerned. When I said all the people concerned, one thing is the fundamental entity is the river and uh, immediately there are farmers and the communities which live there and uh, there are local governments and there are people who live in the cities and there is a larger government. All of them should benefit, otherwise this will not happen. Somebody will put spanner in the works. So this is how the policy was constituted. Fortunately today, the government has received this as a very uniquely positive policy and uh, from Neti Ayog, it's in the Prime Minister's office and I think uh, in a few days uh, the thing will go out, the advisory will go out for all the chief ministers, what they should do in those states. Almost in total, it's, it's being accepted, almost all the recommendations, because these recommendations are not uh, thought up over an academic uh, discussion or debate. These recommendations are my experience of living in the jungles, for weeks on end I've survived in the jungles, I know what it takes for me to survive and for the animals and the creatures to survive. So I lived off the forest, so I know what it takes. If all these things are there, only then life is there, otherwise it just won't happen. So it's been received very positively and the advisories are going out and I must tell you, as already it was mentioned, I think, being in Mumbai, Maharashtra government has been the most proactive government till now for us. <clears throat> uh, a detailed… a detailed project report is being presented tomorrow to the ministry here and we should be on ground in action probably by end of May, April or mid-May. We should be working on the ground, a eighty kilometer stretch across a, a particular tributary. We are f particularly fo focusing on tributaries because for most people, rivers means Ganga, Kaveri, Narmada, uh, Tungabhadra, like this. For example, because my engagement with Kaveri is big, <laughs> Kaveri had seventy-two tributaries, major tributaries. There are many hundreds of minor tributaries. Out of these seventy-two in the last twenty-five years, over thirty-seven have died completely, totally gone. 
what is left is in a meager state. Without the tributaries, how will the river flow? People think still they're in the legend that Ganga came and landed on Shiva's hair and it flowed, they're still in that mindset. They don't understand if a river has to happen, there has to be jungles, there has to be small tributaries, all of them coming together. Somewhere down the line there is a river, a river did not land from heaven. This is something that they have to be very clear about, still this point has not gone across. So we have started working on tributaries, we will be… we will need all your support because we will be campaigning to make the tributaries of every state a common name in children's minds, in people's minds because everybody should know the names of tributaries. You know the name of a big river, that's not good enough because a big river exists only because of these small tributaries. These tributaries has to come into the consciousness of India, it's very important. Thanks, uh, Sadhguru. I'm also aware that uh, the, na the national board has been constituted and the first meeting who happened yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, oh, in Bangalore. No, this was the third meeting. <laughs> the third meeting. Yes. And so anything would you like to share about the board and how… how what is the thinking there and what are the… how is it progressing? And so the Rally for Rivers board, uh, which has very, uh, you know, uh, significant people in the country, we have a Supreme Court Justice and we have the World Wildlife uh, CEO on it and we have the top water expert and the father of FPO movement or the farmer producer organization movement. We have uh, Kiran Majumdar of the Biocon and uh, a few others uh, who are on the ground kind of people. Yesterday's meeting was mainly focused towards uh, how to reduce consumption. So in this, we need to understand that people always think uh, water means it is the cities or the industry uh, polluting things. Yes, it is happening. But the major consumer of water in the country, eighty-four percent of consumption is agriculture. And what… the amount of water we are using and what we are producing is completely disproportionate and not acceptable in modern times. We are still… we have a history of over eight to twelve thousand years of agriculture, which is a phenomenal thing, but we are still irrigating our lands as we did a thousand years ago. This is called flood irrigation because when the floods came, the rivers irrigated the lands in the very early times. Later on, of course, we built dams and flood irrigated, but earlier, flood irrigation essentially meant when the river flooded, it irrigated. But now we are still continuing that process. And this is causing a huge damage to India's soil. India's soil depletion is such a phenomenal drop that on an average, most of the soil in the country has depleted at least by thirty-seven to thirty-nine percent. In some places it's over seventy-five to eighty percent. Twenty-five percent of India is slated to become a desert in the next uh, seven to eight years' time. When we say a desert, what it means is the international uh, the UN uh, standards for soil to be considered as soil is two percent of organic content should be there. In most of the places like Punjab, Haryana, some parts of Maratwada, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh, the organic content in the soil is point zero five percent. It's literally almost… it has become sand. Soil, we're turning it into sand by taking away all the organic content. So the only way you can put back organic content is by the leaf that comes from the trees and the animal uh, excrement. Uh, trees are gone long time ago, I remember this very well when I was involved in farming about thirty-five, forty years ago. The fertilizer companies were openly coming and telling the farmers, you must fell the trees, otherwise they will eat up all your fertilizer, this is a loss for you. If you have trees, they will grow, the, your, they won't let your crops grow because they're taking away the fertilizer. A massive felling happened. In the Ganga region, the tree cover loss in the Ganga banks is… Uh, in the Ganga basin, which accounts for thirty-three percent of our agriculture and twenty-five percent of our geography, it is eighty-nine percent. Eighty-nine percent of the trees you remove and how do you expect water to be restored in the soil? So fortunately now a board has been formed for that and uh, one of your ministers from Maharashtra is a very, uh, you know, very dynamic way of… Uh, out of the box way of doing things. 
a, a minister in Maharashtra government is right now in charge of the river basin in Ganga, which is in largely in Uttar Pradesh and other states. Ganga doesn't flow in Maharashtra, but a minister who is proactive here has been appointed to head that, which I think is good. This is the way to do things that those who are capable of doing it doesn't matter in which part of the country, they must go and do what they're required to do. We are also being co-opted for making this happen. Like this, every river has a sad story. Uh, the important thing in this whole thing is, seventy-five percent of the river and land is in the farmer's hands. How do you handle this farmer who is just struggling to make a living and uh, as the video was saying, over three hundred thousand people committing suicide, their condition is pathetic, their nutritional requirements are… you know, they're in abysmal state, most of the country. Sixty percent of India's population, their skeletal system has not grown to full size. This means we are producing substandard humanity. If your body doesn't grow to full size, neither will your brain grow to full size. This is the kind of people we're producing and we're going on talking about, uh, you know… Demographic dividend. Demographic dividend. Where is the dividend when you produce substandard humanity? Because that is happening in very large scale. So right now we are looking at setting up uh, certain models, large scale models where water consumption can be taken, industry and business has a huge role to play. See, the main part of agricultural disaster comes from… unfolds this way. You need water source and you need to irrigate your land. Irrigation is the biggest investment. Just to give you an example, I was just talking to a Tamil Nadu farmer who is twenty-seven years of age, very enthusiastic, energetic young man. He has three and a half acres, so I asked him, what's your water source? He says he has sunk nine bore wells in three and a half acres. It costs over one crore to sink nine bore wells. He's never going to make it. He has to either sell the land or run away from the village or hang from a tree. This is all the option he's got in the next five years' time. Now we want to take the irrigation away from the farmer and marketing away from the farmer. Farmer should be focused on just growing the crop, which he's actually very good at. India is one nation because of our latitudinal spread from Kanyakumari to the foothills of Himalayas. We can just grow about anything you want in the world, just about anything. And we have the skills, sixty percent of the population knows the magic of how to turn mud into food. This is not a small thing. You take your top qualified people into the land and ask them to grow a crop, it'll be a disaster because it takes a completely different kind of skill which we have, fifty percent. If we handle this right, what we have on paper, if we can execute this in the next ten years' time, we can be the bread, bread basket of India, a bread basket of the world. We can feed the entire world because we have people who have the necessary skills, we have variety of soils, we have variety of temperatures and atmospheres that we need. Everything that they want to have for growing food for the entire world, we have. But we have not exploited that simply because we've left the farmer as he was thousand years ago, not hundred years ago. He's still doing the same practices which were done a thousand years ago. We are envisaging a plan how this can be transformed with the involvement of industry, business, government, everything included. This will not take enormous investments. What this takes is organization and a commitment to fulfill that organizational setup. Right now, if you produce little more, it rots because there is no cold storage, there is no value addition, nothing. If you… if the crop is bad, he suffers. If the crop is good, he suffers. And we have compulsory education system right now. We have done some kind of a survey in Tamil Nadu. I've been asking farmers, how many of you want your children to go into farming? It's less than one percent. In Tamil Nadu, it's less than one percent. On an average in the country, it's less than fifteen percent. So in another twenty years' time when this generation passes, our skill of being able to produce food for this many people, we will lose it because the children are going to school, they don't know a thing about how to grow any uh, crop and neither do they have the body to go back to the farm and work on the land, it's not easy to do that. And in another fifteen to twenty-five years, we are going to lose this ability 
unless we make agriculture into a highly lucrative process in the coming five years. It is possible to do it, we have done it in small modules. Right now we are trying to set up large-scale modules so that we can show in three to five years' time, a farmer can easily multiply his income anywhere between three to eight times. If this happens and the village infrastructure comes up as we have… we are talking about entertainment, sport, uh, culture, folk uh, music and dance, everything to come back. We are seeing how to create this so that it is worthwhile to live in the village. Right now only those who don't have means to escape to Mumbai or to America is still living in the village. Anybody who can escape is gone. It's a trap. It is not a choice, it is a trap. Those who are stuck there are stuck there. You cannot run a nation keeping sixty, sixty-five percent of the population in this condition. Thanks, Sadhguru. I, you know, uh, you know, on behalf of everyone here, I'd like to commit to you that I think, as you rightly said, it does not require as many resources as it requires commitment. And I think what Rally for Rivers is a movement which has been started, and I think some of us have been fortunate to see that movement begin, and I'm sure it will be a historical movement in the, in the country. And I think that commitment which is there from the government, from industry and organizations, from people, will make sure that the, the dream which you have and the work which has been done in this area comes to fruition. <laughs> I wanted to change gears, Sadhguru, and talk I to you. you can give so, me a minute. Yes. Now, the United Nations Ecological Program has taken this and said this is uh, literally in the <laughs> UNEP president's words, he says this is the incarnation of sustainable development. Never before it's been done like this. And on, uh, <laughs> on 22nd, on 22nd of this month, March uh, 2018, we are presenting this to the United Nations. And all the countries are participating in this because most of the countries within 33 degrees latitude, the same policy could be implemented literally toto, except for the cultural aspects. In terms of weather patterns and other things, up to 33 degrees latitude, this can be effortlessly implemented across the globe. This is something the UN has recognized and we are making a presentation there also. Congratulations, Sadhguru. And I think this is, uh, you know, entirely your initiative and India again be becoming a wish guru in this space actually. Thanks to, to, thanks to your initiative. I was wanting to now talk about two other things which are very close to your heart, I know, and you've been thinking about it. One is this thing you spoke about in the audiovisual as well, and I've seen it personally, I've been there at and the ashram and on Shivratri and all that. Basically, you always say you should to be high on life. You don't need chemicals <laughs> to be high on life. I think this menace in India is growing a lot, but it's there globally as well. Your reflections on addiction and, and what is it that, you know, uh, we, should, we should do as a society and collectively as all of us in, in this space is something I wanted, to, I wanted you to share your thoughts on this space. See, every one of you know today that uh, the greatest chemical factory on the planet is human body. The most complex and sophisticated chemical factory on the planet is this. So in one way of looking at yourself is you're, you're a chemical soup. The question is only, do you have a great CEO managing this chemical soup or a lousy CEO? That's all there is <laughs> So if you are a lousy CEO, this is going into a bad chemical state. If this is a great CEO, this is in a fabulous state <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I think that's… Uh, that's so the entire movement is towards creating technologies for well-being, not by philosophy, not by looking heavenward, not with morality, but if your chemistry is blissful right now, who can make you miserable, I'm asking <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. The other thing I think which you've sort of… it's, it's close to your heart and you've been talking about is, is the issue of human trafficking. And I think your reflections in this space because that is the other thing we sort of need to be cognizant of, both in India and globally. This is a very, uh, you know, just about a few months ago, I met someone in United States who is supposed to be some kind of an expert on the internet affairs and stuff. I never get the time to do what is this browsing or this and that <laughs> So, uh, I was just asking him, what are people looking for? So many people are on the net, what are they looking for? And he says, matter of factly, I don't know if… I, I hope this is wrong. He says, uh, 
seventy percent Sadhguru is pornography. And he tells me every year, I don't remember the figure, some millions of children below fifteen years of age are being sold on the internet. I thought, what's happened to us? We're selling our children's children to do dirty things? This means we've lost our humanity fundamentally. So as a part of this, we kind of unleashing this in the coming months, already it's beginning to take off. I have a few hundred, maybe a couple of thousand hours of material that I've spoken. In the last forty years what I have spoken, but in the first ten, twelve years it wasn't recorded, it was on Kony cassettes. <laughs> Later on we came to Sony cassettes, which <laughs> some of them are preserved. But real recording has happened only in the last seventeen, eighteen years. So in these seventeen, eighteen years, the video content we have runs into hundreds of hours. Most of it is just in the archival state. We're… we are a volunteer organization, we don't have enough resource to pull it out, edit it and put it outside. There's material just about every kind of aspect. So I said, as a part of this, I made an announcement among our own groups that whoever wants to take this material, you take it and use it, you monetize it, you run it whichever way you want, it's all free for you. We will give everything we have free of cost, just make sure in this world, we have taken this th thing up that in the next three years, I want to make sure at least ninety percent of the adult population, I'm leaving ten percent for a certain reason <laughs> Ninety percent of the adult population has at least some simple process within themselves that they can do for three minutes a day. Something to settle themselves, something to take care of themselves, something that will not drive them into desperate acts to do something harmful to themselves or to somebody else, at least spare the children. <laughs> no, I think that's a great thought, uh, Sadhguru. I think I'd, I'd like to applaud. I, I can say on behalf of our organization that thank you so much for offering this. We will take it up and we'll do everything. And, and the good news is that in this August gathering, there are a lot of people from media and entertainment who can take up the offer which you are giving. We always look for content and I think this is We've, absolutely uh, great content. I think, yeah, I think, I think it's you know, already there. Yeah. It's, it, this is there the, but I'm yeah. opening this because you are here, I'm telling you, if you want, you can send professional teams yes. that if they're willing to spend a month or two in our archives, which is a huge heap of material which we're not even able to pull out, there is material about all kinds of stuff. You can take the material and use it whichever way you want, you can monetize it, you can do what you want. We will not ask for anything from you. I want this to just get to the people so that people understand all the problems that you have are made by you. And if at all, if solutions have to come, it has to come from within you, there's simply no other way. On this note, Sadhguru, I'd like to open it up to the audience, so we are… we'll welcome a few questions if you have, so please go ahead. And we, I'm sure we have a mic which can be circulated, yeah. I know I'm conscious of that, maybe just a couple of… couple of questions. Eight, yeah. Hello, uh, Sadhguru Pranam. Um, it said there's, there, there's a lot of material floating uh, online saying that the next world war uh, will be fought over water. Uh, just wanted to know your views on that. <clears throat> See, to fight a war you need water. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, how will you fight a war? <laughs> See, uh, people like to People are always busy making predictions of disastrous things. And people keep asking me also all the time, Sadhguru, what will happen in the next twenty-five years to this country? What will happen to the world? Every time some change happens, people want a prediction. See, this is a call that all of us have to take right now. Do we want a prediction or are we going to have a plan towards our well-being? Those who are incapable of making and executing a plan always fall back on predictions. It is time that human beings plan how we are going to be in twenty-five years, rather than planning… rather than predicting what will be the disaster we will face 
why can't we plan rather than predicting disasters? Thank you very much. Yeah, sir. another quick question. Okay, bravo. Have mercy on the heels, sir. <laughs> okay. uh, namaskaram, Sadhguru. Uh, always inspiring to listen to you. A related question is the indiscriminate use of plastic which is growing exponentially. I, I read somewhere that even in UK, only 10% of plastic is recycled, the rest of it is thrown into the oceans. Any suggestions to uh, solve this problem? Thank you. See, uh, there's a whole uh, concerned people are ca running campaigns in many parts of the world, which many of them are in touch with us. They're trying to make plastic the evil. No, plastic is a fantastic material that you could recycle a thousand times or a million times if you want. There isn't another material like that. You can use it just about in any way you want. It is a fantastic material. So plastic is not the problem. It is our irresponsible, unconscious way of doing things which is the problem. So the solution is not in banning the plastic and doing this and that. The solution is only in making the human being conscious enough. There is no other creature on the planet which is using a plastic anything, it is only the human beings. And today, we have the ability to communicate, all of you are in the business of communication. This is the first time we can sit here and literally speak to the entire world if we wish. When we have such an ability on this planet, for the very first time in the history of humanity, do not underestimate this, this is the first time that we can sit here and speak to the entire world. Never before this was possible. When we have such a possibility, why is it that we cannot communicate to every human being on the planet and raise this human awareness and consciousness that we will conduct plastic on everything sensibly in a responsible manner? This consciousness has to rise. Just banning this, banning that won't come because if you ban this, something else will come. Every tw fifteen years we realize we've done the wrong things. It's time that we do something in such a way that so much in sync in nature, that after two hundred years we should know we've done the right thing. Right now, every time we do something, after ten, fifteen years we realize we're doing the very wrong thing. Right now they're saying the biggest polluter in the future by 2040 will not be industry, will not be cars, it is your electronic instruments, Please. your laptops, your iPads, your cell phones, this will be the most disastrous pollution on the planet. So right now we have to do this till two for 2040 and then say this, that we have done the wrong thing, we are going to correct it then. No, we can… Th this is not some rocket science. If you just look at it, as I said, this entire rally for rivers thing, people are asking, are you an environment? I am not an environmentalist, I am not a scientist, I have never read anything about environment, but I have lived in this world. I have lived in this world, I eat food out of this world, I breathe the air in this world, I drink the water in this world, I know how it works. Why is it that I don't know? Because most people think water comes out of the tap <laughs> Sadhguru, it's already very late. One last… Uh, this thing from my end, you know, what is absolutely admirable and it sort of got exemplified in Rally for Rivers is your passion and energy. And as you briefly spoke about, and you mentioned about it, about becoming a great CEO of all these chemicals in this. So, a message for all of us in the audience, what are a few tips or a secret sauce of becoming a better CEO? Because you are an exemplary CEO in this space, so I think if we could learn from you, and that's, that is the last thing from my head. So, all of you, by virtue of your education or geography or birth, Somehow, you've gotten yourself into positions of responsibility and some kind of power. Communication is power. How are we going to use this is the question, isn't it? How are we going to use this is the question. If we want to use it well, really well, tell me, when you are feeling really wonderful, let's say you're feeling fantastic within yourself this moment, are you not naturally inclined to do nice things to everybody around you? Hello? 
<laughs> when you are feeling wonderful, it's natural for you to share that. When you're feeling nasty, you also share that. Hello? <laughs> you do, you can't help it, isn't it? So this is the most fundamental responsibility that we have. Once life elevates us to a certain position of power and responsibility, how we keep this is very important. Once you are in a position to influence and impact people's lives, how you think, how you feel, how you act, how you breathe affects everybody around you. So is it not the first thing we must take care of? Once life has offered this opportunity to us that we are able to impact life around us, the very way you sit, stand, breathe, everything should be measured and looked at carefully as to how it works best. This is like you're in your position, you're in a position of responsibility and power means in some way you're on a fast track. If you're on F1 track, then I don't know if you've seen racing machines, I've always been engaged with them. And uh, if you're on F1 track, then you have to look at everything, you know. Everything and everything and everything over and over and over again, the same things. I will tell you, I was in the Ferrari dock, uh, paddock in the Singapore races, I was just looking at these guys. They've been given hundred octane petrol, okay? It is the best possible fuel. They're putting it through the regular filter. They have a racing filter, they put through that and they're not happy. They're getting some silk cloth and they're putting through the fuel, through the silk cloth, three times over before it goes into the car. I was just looking at this and this is… this is care. Because one tiny speck of something means the car will malperform. Malperform doesn't mean it will stop. It just means if it just misses a little bit like that, the race is over for that car. Second, yeah. So I'm saying in some way, when you get to a certain pace of activity in your life, you are like a racing machine. When you are a racing machine, what goes in, how you breathe, how you sit, how you do everything needs to be looked at. Only then this will perform at a certain level. This is not to talk about myself because he's put me in the dock <laughs> But our lives go like this. Now I have hundreds of people who do the same thing around me, but my life has always been like this. I'm minimum twenty hours a day, seven days of the week, three hundred and sixty-five days, doing variety of activity, not one kind, okay? Today I have hundreds of people around me, they're all like this. Three days if we don't sleep, we're still functional, we're not going to fall apart. Oh, is this some kind of miracle? No. If you… this… the immensity of being human, unfortunately has not been explored by most of the humanity. Human being means it is an immense possibility. Are we going to make it into just one more creature who eats, sleeps, reproduces and dies one day or are we going to make this into something fantastic that just the very existence is just fantastic to be here. Just to sit here and breathe is absolutely fantastic. If this happens to a human being, it doesn't take much if you invest twenty, thirty minutes a day, we will make this happen for you. That if you simply sit here, it is just fantastic to be alive. Once you are like this, nothing nasty will come in your mind. Why would you want to do something nasty to anything around you? when you have no sense of nastiness in you. This is not out of morality, this is not out of ethic, this is not a controlled behavior, do I look controlled? I'm wild <laughs> But nothing will go wrong because why will it go wrong? Why will anything go wrong with life? Because the greatest thing that's happened here is life. Why is it wrong? You think creation is wrong? It's fantastic, but it is too sophisticated a machine. It needs a certain level of attention. Do you agree with me that this human mechanism that all of you carry is the most sophisticated machine on the planet? Do you agree with me? Yes. I'm asking, have you read the user's manual? <laughs> it's time to do that. <laughs> thank, thank you, you uh, Sadhguru. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you Sadhguru and for your inspirational thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you Sadhguru once again <laughs> for sharing your Thoughts with us. Thank you so much. It's indeed a. She's a. She wants a picture. Let's put a picture. Let's put a picture.
subtitle it as Beauty and the Beast or something like that. Oh, what a role! Wow, ladies and gentlemen, could we have another huge round of applause for the one and only Sadhguru and thank you very, very much Mr. Vats for taking us through such a beautiful journey. Uh, what an incredible conversation that was. Those ideas, truly magic and ladies and gentlemen talking about magic, it is right here on this planet that we live on and it is contained in water and ladies and gentlemen it is my urge to each one of you and I'm sure we are pretty much focused on it that we will find this magic together and keep it alive. Thank you very much once again Mr. Watts for steering this beautiful conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to request uh, Ramesh sir to kindly present a token of appreciation to Sadhguru before he leaves. Or if we could invite him back on stage. Yes, we would. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, as we invite Sadhguru back on stage, could I please request you all to kindly put your hands together yet again for, for that incredible few minutes of invigorating conversation. Thank you very, very much, uh, Ramesh sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Sadhguru, thank you very, very much. Thank you for inspiring us. Thank you, Ramesh sir. This evening has been orchestrated to felicitate the Green Champions tonight. And there is a mammoth team that goes behind helping us put this wonderful evening together. Ladies and gentlemen, while Sadhguru leaves, I shall still hold the mantle and continue to speak. So if I have your attention, oh my God, that would just make my day. We would like to extend a huge thank you to our green partner, Lokmat Maharashtra, and now Pune's number one newspaper and our conservation partner. We have a small token of appreciation for all our guests who are present here this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not forget to, uh, please remember to collect it before you leave on your way out. Before we draw the curtains on this evening, we do hope that this movement of uh, going green continues to grow. It continues to go bigger and better every single year. And we promise you when we come back with the ninth edition of the Olive Crown Awards, we will continue to keep doing our bit for this planet and of course work on ourselves because if we are happy, we will not do anything nasty to this planet that we live on. Ladies and gentlemen, remember to plant your badges and your invites. They're made of seats. And do not hesitate to take the small but crucial steps for every step towards sustainability that will help us save our planet. I do have a very long monologue and I thank you for your patience. Thank you for being such a lovely audience. To all our partners, jury members, nominees and winners, I hope you've had a great time. Celebrations have just begun. I'm going to join you for a drink now. Have a lovely evening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Thank you, jury members. Thank you, winners. Thank you, everybody. Newspaper in Maharashtra to feature in the top 10 newspapers in India. With 1.8 crore readers, India's number one Marathi newspaper is also now Pune's number one. 1999, the beginning of a loving relationship, a bond of trust and unconditional love. Lokmat with Pune, both with tradition and new trend. And today it's an honor that the Indian Readership Survey 2017 clearly shows that Pune confessed its love for Lokmat and made Lokmat the